Okay, I'm just uh, fitting the mechanical brakes now back to the frames. So these are the little um, band brakes that you can see that break the roller um, on air pressure. Uh, this is so that you can obviously drive on and off the rollers or else once you've sort of sat between them you won't be able to get off because it will just spin. Uh, we've got to put these in before I sink them in the ground because some of the parts you have to get at from underneath, the springs in between and also the retaining springs that pull them back. Um, I'll just try to operate them with the airline just to show and prove that they're working. A minute. I've just hooked up all the pipes on this end of the uh, roller unit now. So this is the um, the feed comes through from the other set of rollers and T's here. Uh, obviously then feeds the T and then each individual flexi runs each brake. And then it's basically the same, gonna go on that one, linked together by that tube. And then this is your input here. Well, I'm just dropping the uh, rollers now back into the frames because I want to just um, put the shaft in between it to make sure everything lines up and spins freely. Um, it needs to move towards that way a bit and I'm going to have to do a bit more chiselling around the front here just to let the water pipes out. Um, but that's near enough how it's going to be sitting um, when it's finished. But I'm not going not gonna to find the bottle to the floor just yet because I want to just be sure first. Okay, I've got all the rollers in now, which was a bit tricky for myself. They're a lot heavier than they look, um, they're like solid steel. So they're all in now, I'm spinning freely. Um, I just had to adjust the brakes slightly one side. I'm just making up some plates now to join the, because this, this whole unit actually sits as two separate units. Obviously you've got the link shaft in between, which is now on, so I spin one side spins the other so I'm just making up some plates to join them together um, obviously when they're bolted to the floor it stops them from moving but I just kind of wanted to make something so they were actually linked physically um, so I've just got these two big plates here I put one there one there and drill three holes in each side just to bolt the two units together um, just to make sure it's fixed because obviously if this starts moving independently it puts massive strain on that shaft which is obviously just a straight shaft there is these grease joints give ever so slight play just so you haven't got to get it absolutely bang on but it's i've actually made sure it is bang on right i've decided to bolt these two frames together with these big thick plates which i've just finished doing now which basically means these two are locked together now they can't slide independently Right, we're just testing out an air solenoid, it's a cheapy one off eBay. This is to activate the brakes, so we'll just 12 volt to it. Yeah, that's working nicely, that is. Right, right I just made this concoction up. Uh, we've got an absolute lash up of fittings here, but we basically need to get from the uh, uh, olive and nut on the end of the uh, frame there, which connects to the brakes, to a sort of a barb that I can tube clip a air hose down to so that is the combination of pieces I've found in the drawer of random fittings to do that. Right this is what we're going to be modifying as a hand controller uh, for the dyno uh, we don't have the original Clayton um, hand unit I'm afraid um, it's pretty simple really because it's just going to be a few buttons but originally it would have just been two buttons this is actually a winch controller um, used to be a winch wind in you can see it says cable in and cable out um, so we need basically one button to load the water brakes, one button to unload the water brakes, uh, one break, one button to turn the system on, um, and, and then another pair of buttons to lo oh, to lock and then unlock the air brakes on the dyno. Um, so I'm going to chop this piece of plastic off, mount two more buttons where the writing is, well three actually, the power button, but leaving room for another button so that if we go down the uh, software dyno control at some point in the future, we can have a start recording button or go button on here to save having to use a mouse on the computer. So we've got that piece, there's then the back piece of the uh, old controller which is a bit smashed up and been repaired at the top, but that won't matter. And the, obviously the original contactors which are ridiculously overkill considering we're just gonna be running 12 volt solenoids, but they'll work. Um, 
Right, so I've got an airline hooked up now um, at that end, which then runs around the dyno. That's just a bit of off cut there. Um, up to, I've just put this together with a few fittings. Um, the air brakes themselves need to be regulated to 100 psi, that's all they're rated for. Um, we run our airline higher than that on the main regulator. Uh, just because the air tools work better, I know you're not supposed to, but everything works better. So we don't want to go blowing the airbags up, although they probably would be fine. We do run near a 200 psi. So I've put a regulator here, we've got the airline, I've teed the main airline, um, comes in. So we've got this, it's got the solenoid here which will uh, load the brakes so that will air up. Um, I've mounted a gauge on the front of the regulator that came with it, um, just so that when you're in there, and I've, the reason I put it on the side here is because this is where the monitor is going to be, and then when you're in the car you can stare at it, so you can load the brakes up, and when you air them down you can make sure you do completely drop the pressure so that the brakes don't drag, or else you're going to completely destroy them. So that will allow air in, which will air them up, and then the other one will air down, which is just a vent to atmosphere, so that will just drop the pressure, and then this is teed here, and that goes on down to the brakes. Okay, that's all the switches mounted in there now. See on the front, I've just left space there for another one and we could always put one there if we needed it as well. Right, just wiring up these switches now. Um, I had a roll of uh, trailer light cable lying around. It's got a nice heavy wall on it, which is ideal. Um, so I'm going to use that because there's plenty of cores in it. A seven core, which is kind of ideal for this really got the three there, the two there and the two more here which leaves me two spare basically so I can add two more functions to this without um, having to run any more cables to it so I'm just going to coil those up and leave them inside and then we'll put the casing back together again right so I've got the uh, air solenoids and everything set up now um, on the remote and I've got all the wires just put back onto a junction block on the wall ready for when the water breaks and stuff go in um, so we just made a little hook there to keep that one now at the minute obviously the rollers are in free wheel um, zero psi on the brakes so if I just get them rolling up see if I press the red button that will then load the brakes you see the hold right like, loads them up and then the green one releases them um, just keep releasing it. it takes about five seconds for it to come back down to zero, zero psi um, and the nice thing is actually is the bleed off as soon as it gets to zero um, it, it runs out of pressure and that one there just lifts up which just leaves it wide open which is a nice little bonus actually of the regulator um, which means that there's no way you can leave them drag they um once they get below one psi the, the valve flips and it just sits at zero then so that's the brake sorted out